Right, we've got a bit of a sort of street heroes theme going on this week, and look what I've got. If I could only have one drink for the rest of my life, it would be a pint of bitter. And if I could only drive one supercar, it would be this. The Aston Martin Vantage. It's superb. In the 1970s, Aston Martin was in trouble. It had turned into a maker of soft GT cars. And then, in 1974, it went bust. Meanwhile, the opposition was on a roll. The Italians were saving weight and putting the engine in the middle. The Germans were still putting it in the back, but with stunning results. Something had to be done. So, Aston's engineers, backed with cash from another optimistic owner, took one of their standard two-door coupes, whipped the engine out, gave it 40% more power, bolted it back in, fiddled with the suspension, and tarted up the bodywork a bit. And then, I like to think, they went to the pub. And they didn't drink, frankly, because what they had produced was, to my mind, the definitive 1970s supercar. In order to understand the impact of the Vantage, I want you to imagine a simple scene down your local boozer. Now, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, Porsche, all that lot, they're the blokes around the bar with the big opinion, giving it lots of that. Aston Martin is the quiet bloke in the corner, with his pint of best and the crossword. And then, suddenly, he decides he's had enough. So he gets up, he takes them all outside, and he gives them a bloody good hiding. That's exactly what the Vantage did. At its launch in 1977, it was the world's fastest production car, beating the Ferrari Daytona to 60 miles per hour. Only by a tenth of a second, but in a bar brawl down at the Rack and Pinion, that was enough. Aston was back in business and showing how the future of the British supercar would be. Big, front engine, rear wheel drive, weighty, well built, not to be messed with. And it was this approach that would set them apart from the rest of Europe. The Italians, you see, would concentrate on making a really, really fast car, but then they'd start to worry about all the practical stuff, like where's the driver going to sit, and can he see out, and how are you going to join up all those wires that make the lights work? The British way, however, is to start with a normal car and then make it very fast. Think of the Jaguar XJR. It's one of the world's most comfortable saloon cars, and it just happens to go like a stabbed rat. So, this Aston's actually perfectly comfortable. I can get in and out okay, I can see where I'm going, I can see behind me, it's even got quite a decent boot. I mean, it'll still pull my face off if I wanted to, but most of the time it just sort of soothes my fevered brow. And then there's the engine. There's no high-rev melodrama here, just a big, lazy, 5.3-litre V8. Say you wanted a bang in a nail, you could belt it really hard with a little hammer, or you could give it a tap with a really big one. The Aston's engine is a sledgehammer. Right, let's meet some more people who might appreciate it. Here we are at the Campaign for Real Ales Festival in Chapel. These chaps can tell you the specific gravity of 300 ales, all in the time it takes me to sink a swift pint. This is where the honesty and goodness of real beer is preserved and honoured. This is serious business drinking this stuff. What is a proper pint? High quality malted barley. A decent beer is really, you've got the brewer's heart and soul in them. You know. Traditional um, ingredients. It's not it's rocket, simple, sorry. but it is also complicated as well. And a careful uh, selection of hops. What's 501 minus 137? Why are you trying to trick us? Yeah, see, they're not real beer drinkers. They don't, play, they don't play darts. <laughs> so, beer isn't complicated. It's just a few simple ingredients all brewed up together. But you can still get it wrong. Supercars aren't complicated either. Power, good looks, a great noise. But you could get that wrong as well. 
You could end up with a Ferrari Testarossa. Aston Martin, though, got it spot on. I cannot remember ever wanting a car as badly as I want this Aston. It is fantastic. I absolutely love it. And the thing is, so does everyone else. Look, if I were driving a Porsche 911 down this street, some of the villagers would secretly hate me. But everybody loves the Aston. It may be rare and a bit pricey, but somehow it's of the people. This is the way a British supercar should be. Its values are sound and robust. It's like these magnificent men. They carry a torch for purity, and even though they may drop it occasionally, they are warriors, guardians of a simple faith, their beer. Proper beer, the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. One is simple, straightforward, and for people who don't want anything too fancy. And the other's a pint. Cheers. Fabulous car, that. Absolutely brilliant. I'd love one. Word of warning, though, don't think you can go out there and buy a cheap one. You have no. to spend at least 50000 ready for a good one. Which is a bit steep. Frankly, it knocks it off my Chrissy Prezi list, if I'm honest. You've done it again! You're not going to believe it!